So I give you Soren Hanna. So have a look at this. Not a single microprocessor in the room and how things have changed. Well, how many of you are software developers or write code of some kind? Give me a yell. Yeah. All right, good. It's amazing what you've done. And, and what's even more amazing is how long it took us to do it. About 40 years, about my lifetime, we went from pretty much, you know, Unix running on PDP-11 to Unix running on, you know, 70% of the people in this room's iPhone. And that's absolutely amazing. In, in about the same amount of time, we've got to get to this. We've got to get from about 20 tons of CO2 per person in Australia down to about zero. And I guess my plea to you is that we can write code to make this happen. Now, you might say that's far-fetched, but just look at what some people with a technology background are doing. Bill Gates has said the top priority for the Gates Foundation is in fact to get the developed world now to a zero impact. And in order to do this, we'll need energy miracles. And this is really to save the poorest two billion people who are suffering because of the way we're living. But Bill, one software developer to another, there's no silver bullet. There's no miracle thing that's going to mean that we don't have to think and change and adapt the ways that we're living, that we don't need to adopt new systems. But when I see this, I recognize the classic adoption problem. Think with Windows Vista. You know, if it's all about pain in order to get that security fix, if it's 20 clicks to do what you used to do with two, people are not going to go for it. And so what the first thing we have to do is we have to show that there's a better future. This is a future in which we have none-like longevities. We're all riding around on scooters. We've got community-based architecture. We've got location-based devices. And all right. <laughs> For me, this future is one of abundance. And of course, I'm ripping this off Steve Mc, uh, 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 Bill McDonough. It is the future in which we do have better tasting food. We've got local communities and cities are friendlier. But I hear what you're all saying, so go ahead and say it. Thank you very much. But this is where you come in. This is the role that you have to play. You have to make decisions that are sustainable. And so how do you do that? How do you begin to get this feedback loop going back into businesses and back into governments? Well, you've heard about it from a number of presenters tonight. It's transparency. It's access to data. And so what's key here, and this is where the indie developers come in, is access to tools and data. Because if you get this going, businesses and governments are going to shape up. Tim Berners-Lee said, raw data now. This was his chant at a TED talk. And indeed, governments have responded. And they've released 7,000 data sets, about 700 related to sustainability. Now, businesses are getting into it too. So Apple, they absolutely got creamed by Greenpeace a while back. Do you all remember that? Yeah, well, they've begun also. It's like, well, that's an incentive for them to say, all right, well, open up the supply chains. Let people see a little more about what we're doing. Businesses are doing this, but there's a big problem and that this data is spread around everywhere. And so we as developers, we have to pull it together. We have to put it behind managed APIs. We have to be able to deal with you support calls when there are data errors. You know, and this needs to happen. The next thing we need to do is to bring it down to human scale because just having the data out there is very amateurish. It has to be tangible and it has to be understandable and it has to mean something. The earlier talk on location-based things, that's what we're talking about, bringing it down to human scale. For example, maybe you've seen Hans Rosling's work on Gapminder. It's absolutely fantastic. It makes data understandable and tangible. And this is really the highest, most abstract data. So think what you can do when you can bring it down to your personal life. And this is what I do. For example, I use this app, uh, Watts On, to track my own impact, the amount of energy in all my activities, but also in my products. That iPhone that all of you have, three watts a day. That's part of your allotment. A little hard to understand, but you can take it the step further and use source map, and you can see the whole supply chain. You can see where the various pieces come from. But there's, there's something bad here, and that's it. You know, these apps suck. They're, they're really not ready for prime time yet. And so this is where you come in. You need to just take these APIs and go out and make some money. Build commercial applications that people will actually want to use, not just the crazy people like me who are anal enough to track all the details of their life through Twitter, tweeting it into uh, your source data or whatever it's called. 
So I have to mention iPhones. I think it's obligatory at this point. This is what I've got on mine. One helps me find local sustainable food. Another, I can span bar scan barcodes and get a sustainability rating. So the last thing we have to do is what I'm doing now, and it's going out to recruit you to join me on the magic bus to set your data free if you're in government or a big company, or to go out and make some money and build some apps that'll change the world. Thanks very much.